Welcome to Treasure Valley Podcast. I'm Chuck. Today's episode is brought to you by Lower Gentry Studios. Lower Gentry Studios, of which I am a part, is a Treasure Valley film production company that specializes in original content. We have a web series that is coming out this December, exact date yet to be determined, entitled Canyon County. So stay tuned for that. In today's episode, I chat with Elliot Norton, who is the writer and director of said production, as well as two other feature films that uh, have been produced um, by Lower Gentry Studios. I hope you enjoy. Treasure Valley Podcast. I have Elliot Norton. Um, this is our third attempt at uh, doing today's podcast because of equipment issues. But we'll just call this the the pilot episode of Treasure Valley Podcast rather than the first episode. Wait, Be- are you going to air this first then? I I don't know. I mean, it depends upon how interesting you are. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to like put like a bad foot forward. <laughs> Come be on our podcast. What uh, what what do you have so far? Well, here's our first episode. It's a pilot. Like you're supposed to have a really interesting pilot in order yeah, to exactly. get people to. So we'll see. I'm just talking to my brother about our parents and stuff. <laughs> There's not a lot. Oh of... yeah, let's do that. We have uh, we have similar parents. <laughs> yeah, exactly similar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tell so... stories about like our aunts and uncles and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would go over well. Yeah, I exactly. Think. That's fine. Remember Bruce? Yeah. <laughs> and then just, laugh. just just go just go in depth um, with that with our own personal lives. Mm-hmm. That well, that that's commonality though, right? Yeah. Everybody has everybody has aunts and uncles and all that stuff. Uh, let's talk about writing. Okay. Um. So so Elliot and I have just we just finished filming our third large project, uh, Canyon County, mm-hmm. um, which will be which will be out in December, uh, pending any disasters. But the footage looks usable, so it's it's looking that's a, good. That's a ringing endorsement. Yeah. No, the, I mean the like, footage looks have, usable. It looks it looks usable. <laughs> Not like great or fantastic you, uh, or amazing. You pointed the usable. camera. You pointed the camera in the correct direction. There's no booms. <laughs> there's no there's no booms in it. Yeah. Uh, there's no camera shadow. Maybe there's a couple. Maybe there's a couple booms, but we cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> unless unless it really added to this, to the shot. Yeah. Um. So. Let's talk about writing because I feel like there are a lot of people that don't uh, understand understand the writing process, and and so you have been writing for a very long time. Yeah, you started. When would you say you you started writing in earnest? Yeah, um, I guess. I mean, I guess I started in earnest in. Um, I think my. I mean, like sophomore year of high school, and then like it, like it really like hit hard in senior year of high school, and then and then throughout college, I, that's when I was like really like, that's when I started like telling people like I'm gonna be a writer and stuff like that when I was at parties and stuff, and I was actually like I was legitimately practicing too, like actually writing stories on my own and stuff like that, and then I took classes like creative writing classes and stuff like that. So okay, that was the I mean I'd say yeah, sophomore year of high school kind of dabbled and then it got serious like senior year of high school okay and then um when did you get good i got good um because i read some of your high school stuff (laughs) (laughs) i got good um i don't know if i'm still i i got competent i think when i was um i got i got kind of competent when i was 25 i wrote a two-page short story that i was like this is this is good I was okay. 25. Was that the in half darkness? No, 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 no. That was when I was 22. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah. So we, we've already talked about, about this like just a few minutes ago, but technical issues. So that's good that you're going in another direction. You're throwing me for a loop. Yeah. I was expecting you to talk about one thing. So in the half darkness, um, that was the first time that you said you kind of chimed into something. Yeah. As far as, as far as writing is concerned. Yeah. And what did you, what did you chime into? I mean, just like dramatic situations, I guess, in general. Okay. And like ways... I think I think when you first start off as like when you want to like write, you're kind of doing it as like a kind of self help therapy thing where it's like all just about you, you know. And okay. then like there's no like broader audience outside of just like the audience of yourself, 
you know that's just like yeah isn't this interesting this happened to me the other day and then everybody's like i don't really care you know? so like <laughs> so, so 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 all of you writing up until the point at 22 it was just like you writing about yourself and, yeah and like and navel gazing to... and just like or, or or just like i didn't have the imagination to like think was that one of your stories called navel gazing no <laughs> okay no i mean it was but it was really bad i read I mean, navel gazing i i didn't mind it but it, it you know i it didn't remind me of my navel yeah navel. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was yeah it was really you know you just start off as being really bad so i mean and then i yeah 22 i wrote uh my senior my my, my undergrad thesis because i decided to get it in creative writing my undergrad th thesis was pretty decent and then um and then that just had like one that had like one really good scene in it and it had kind of a good ending and then so i think the main switch was i started thinking of kind of because i was reading a lot more and i started thinking of basically things in terms of like kind of an audience and so not really like an audience in the way that they sometimes talk about it. Like when we're at like film meetings or whatever, it's like, you need to find the millennial audience or it was just like generally like, okay, if I were picking this up cold mm -hmm. and I'd never read it before, I started thinking from that perspective. And then, so then when you start thinking of that, then you can start like cueing people into like little clues and stuff like that. And then, you know, does that make sense? I don't know. Like, um, so, so you, you you were trying to make sure that it was interesting for a stranger. Exactly. That, okay. Somebody that never, that had, been, that had never like picked it up before, as opposed to just like me. And I, I think part of that is just like growing up and stuff like that okay. and understanding that not everybody's just interested in you, which oh. is like a really painful experience to, okay. to go through. So sometimes but I think I, everybody goes through it where it's just like, wow, the world does not revolve around me, <laughs> you know, like that. Well, because it revolves around me, right? That's why yeah, everybody else goes yeah. through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it revolves around Chuck. Yeah. So, no, I I, I mean, I don't understand it, but hypothetically, I know what it's like for other people. Yeah. I would guess, you know, I, I'm not sure. But yeah. uh, um, so anyway, we were talking about writing about me. Yeah. No, uh, so so you were, uh, you write you write about your character. Your characters come off really well, I think. Like, f it, it's very... Um, that I means a lot that. coming from my brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're pretty good. <laughs> mom really likes it, too. <laughs> that's why I hang my two out with biggest, you. My two biggest fans, <laughs> my mom and my brother. <laughs> Biologically, I'm required to uh, give you a good, a ringing endorsement. Yeah. Um, with, your, with your characters, did you make a transition then into, because I see you n jot down stuff. And then mention things. And then uh, even when you're giving an anecdote, um, w if we're just hanging out, it seems like you you do a good job of like removing yourself from the situation and then like pointing out whatever aspects might have happened to that person that are inherently dramatic or inherently emotional or something like that, whether it be like like funny or usually it's funny yeah. uh, with the anecdotes because obviously you're not sitting around hanging, like having beers with some people and explaining to them like a really sad story. Yeah. Uh, I mean unless you want to clear the room. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so so where does that where does that fit in? Like how much time do you spend in your writing drawing on other people's experiences and, and then trying to be like empathetic to their situation? Um I think it's I think it's a lot of it. I mean, I think I think part of the I think it's different for everybody. I think in terms of cuz you're asking about like character writing, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, okay. you just so, said, I mean, so you're not just like a, your own navel yeah, or exactly. whatever. You're just looking at yourself and like, this is me in this situation. This is me in the other situation, which yeah. I think a lot of people do yeah. in their writing. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's just like you end up, because you end up, as you get to like know different people and as you get to like talk to different people, you understand that they're like not you. And then you try to like zero in on what aspects are different about them. And usually, I guess for me, maybe because I, I fault like the imagination, maybe. Um, usually it's just like something in their backstory. And then so then I just imagine myself with a different backstory and then how that would like maybe cue my way into how that would cue my worldview, if that makes sense. Do okay. You, do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, so like basically environment, because I believe like environment like kind of basically like determines who you are. So if these things happen to me personally, that's how I kind of empathize with people. Like if these things were to happen to me, how would that change my outlook? And then it okay. becomes, I think it becomes easier to write characters at that juncture, but then maybe there's something else missing. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. Okay. Yeah, it definitely was a step forward though. Like it was definitely like as soon as you started like as soon as I started like thinking in those terms, then I was able to kind of come up with l a l characters that were a little bit more complex. And then also I could like self-analyze as well and like look at myself from like the outside and then I could write characters that were even maybe, maybe a little bit more closer to myself and then like write them in, in more of a negative light, which was kind of a big step too. 
Oh, well, why didn't you just ask me? I would have helped you out with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could have yeah. gotten over that hump pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so characterization, obviously, is really important in the writing process. Well, yeah. What was, what was that? Uh, I, think it was, I think it was Roger Ebert once said, um, you don't remember plot, you remember characters. That's which true. Is, I agree true. with that. Yeah, which is true. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. And uh, we had talked before we started recording a little bit about um, some of the things that I really enjoy, though, are those imaginary like like universes. And I guess yeah. I guess I guess you don't cue into like uh, fanciful fantasy worlds unless there's there's a character that actually goes through a story arc. I mean, it started when I was young and read The Hobbit. You know, that was kind of like yeah, yeah, and 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 the detail that goes into those to those worlds yeah um matrix obviously uh uh jurassic park um obviously is fantasy yeah but those sci-fi. are like i guess those are i guess that's different too because that's not really like a plot either like you're not really queuing into the plot of it you're queuing yeah. into like the setting almost or it's like or like the, the rules of an environment or the rules of like a world yeah but i mean it, but it's probably pretty crappy unless there's a Unless there's a character that you relate to. I oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, even like... Uh, now I'm trying to think of a movie that's like really awful that has... This is a cool like... That, that has, has like a cool, cool like setting concept. and stuff like that. I yeah. Know, I was trying to... The Avatar, maybe. or <laughs> Was that a cool... Se- I don't know. <laughs> well, it was... De- he, t- he spent a lot of time working on it. I mean, it I don't looked know. pretty. It did. It looked cool. And then uh, I remember there was an interview with him where he's like, the mountains are going to float. And he's like, sometimes you don't have to like give a reason for it. I'm like, that's pretty lazy. <laughs> Mountains was, float in this universe. Yeah. Why? Because <laughs> I say. Yeah. It's my imagination, man. I am man. God of this world. It's my imagination. This is my film. Yeah. What is that uh, That thing about um, uh, That thing about dream logic and stuff like that? I always think that that's kind of a, that's kind of a, a, a crap answer. When, yeah. when when you just when you just cue into it's just it's like, just like this is the way it works and that's the way it is. Yeah, Sorry, it's just like, yeah, I don't know. I guess like some people get away with it, like David Lynch. But yeah, but David Lynch is like so far out there. It's like so postmodern. Yeah, that it's like <laughs> that it's like okay, I guess this is actual dream logic. Yeah, but I hate it when it's just like well, it's just dream logic and it's just like a regular movie and then they just make like a jump. And it's just like well, it's just dream logic. And it's like nah. I was trying to think. What was that? Did you see that the last Guillermo del Toro movie? Which one, which one was it? I don't know. It's where like she she has sex with a fish. Oh no no no! Like, I didn't I didn't like see splash. that one. Splash. It's like splash. But <laughs> it's splash but with like a man. More, with, with like more, a, yeah, man. it's just like a more serious splash. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it even ends the same way. But uh, yeah. Like, Spoiler alert! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now I'm gonna have to put a put a, a warning on this on this podcast. Yeah, we will talk about the ending of the Guillermo del Toro movie that won Best Picture, The Shape of Water. Shape of Water. Okay. The Shape of Water. Okay. Um, but yeah, well, like, I don't think anyone's ever seen Splash. <laughs> Everybody's seen Splash. Really? Yeah. Uh, I guess I've seen it. Yeah, I've I don't. Seen re- Splash. I don't remember much about I just, Splash. I remember it's the same thing. Remember, she's like in some like laboratory, and then that she escapes. Now you're giving even she... more spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> the mermaid escapes, and then and then Tom Hanks ends up having sex with her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah, that's right. Tom Hanks, who played the mermaid, wasn't it Daryl? Daryl Hannah. Hannah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hannah. Back when she was yeah, yeah, she was good. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, you so were gonna say back when she was hot. <laughs> yeah, well, I think she was still hot all the way up until uh, until Kill Bill. Yeah, she was still hot in Kill Bill. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she was. Old I mean, too. I don't even, I don't even know. Like, I, I haven't seen her recently yeah. at all. Anyway, she's, she's got deals. She was awesome in Kill Bill. Yeah, she was. Yeah, that was she cool. Was, she was badass. It made me want to watch Splash again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, back to I, ba- 20, 20 years earlier than this, man. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, back to back to the dream logic thing. I think mm. that that because I remember he had said something about like it's a fantasy, like dream logic or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then like, but at the end, but he uses it at the end, and it's almost like a Deus Ex Machina because everything else was following like these very specific rules, and then all of a sudden yeah. at the end, it's just like whatever. <laughs> Dream logic. <laughs> Appendix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I couldn't figure out I couldn't figure out how to end it like satisfyingly within my own rules. And just then so I peter just, it out. Yeah. Well it's kinda like that uh, like the obstructions that you put on did you ever watch the Lars von Trier movie, the uh, what was it called? The Seven Obstructions. It was hmm. on Filmstruck for a while. No. A- anyway, he goes to this like this avant garde filmmaker from I think he's from Denmark, because Lars von Trier is from Denmark, I think. 
and then so uh lars lars von that's, Trier. that sounds sounds very danish yeah exactly yeah yeah i think yeah so he's from denmark and then um and he goes to this like this danish filmmaker that's like this famous avant-garde danish filmmaker mm-hmm. or whatever and then he asks him to remake his short film uh seven different times or is it five different times i can't remember it's five or seven and then okay. each one he sets like an obstruction on him like a like a very hard rule that he has to follow yeah and i can't remember all of them because i watched it when i was in college but the first rule i remember is that no shot can be more than half of a second oh wow yeah and would it look like an mtv video or something <laughs> no actually it ended up being it actually ended up being really cool because he would use like he would use like the static shots because 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 that was that was the only rule it was just like no shot can be more than than half of a second mm-hmm. but you can still like stack shots that are from the same angle on top of each other okay yeah, so it was this very avant garde. So, so basically, he was taking like one angle, and then it was like kind of like this, like, because, um, like, like an animation almost, almost, like, yeah, yeah, where he was just taking like little bits of like somebody like going through like a room, like yeah. that's how he got around it at one point to keep like a wide angle, yeah, and then he would do the same things with like a two shot and stuff. I mean, if I remember correctly, it was it's been a while, but I remember that was like his way around it. Where it's oh, just wow. like obviously people have seizures if everything's just like boom, 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 boom. but if you yeah. have a static shot and then you just. Like oh, you're okay. following somebody almost like a like a flip book. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It was That's kinda cool. Yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking like, well I remember thinking like at the at the end of the Shape of Water, I guess any movie that all of a sudden incorporates dream logic or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like if if he would have just like given up and been like, Okay, never mind, I'm not gonna have I'm not gonna follow that rule anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You'd be cheating. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, I was supposed to like, it's supposed to be half of a shot, you know, like mm-hmm. the rules that you set for yourself are like what makes the game fun, you know? Yeah. It's like if you're playing Monopoly and all of a sudden yeah. it's just like, oh, never mind. I'll just take Never all mind. The I'm the banker. I'm just going to take all the cash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, that's what makes I it win. fun. Yeah. I'm going to buy all the hotels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just take them from the box. You yeah, guys exactly. Lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's kind of true. When did you, when did you first watch that movie? Did you say again? The, the Lars Van Trier, like with the obstructions? Oh, that was, uh, that was in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. I feel like I feel like you do a good job working with obstructions. I feel like that's kind of where our niche is, is working with obstructions. Like whether or not people realize that when they watch our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we have a two hundred dollar camera. That's our obstruction. Why yeah. is that the obstruction? Well, you, it's usually just money's the obstruction. Yeah, exactly. Or people. Yeah, money or people. <laughs> Getting people to show up. Well, we had a bunch of characters, so let's just make it one character because yeah. this person will show up on that day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How do we do that? Well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's usually money or space settings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about before, because we, we hit on that, um, before we started recording yeah, or we did start recording, but then we lost it. Are we recording now? Do you want to just make sure? Um, yeah. Double right. checking and I'm looking at it and Should I look at the, the, the bar is moving. No, cool. we're, we're good. Um, you throw a lot of your writing away. You just trash it. I don't say, I don't say I trash it, but I, I, I keep it. Got it. But I you throw it in a giant compost heap to be used for soil for later projects. It, yeah, is that kinda, a good analogy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sweet. it's just like yeah, I just throw it. Yeah, I have a lot of notebooks and I just like put them in a corner and then I don't. And then yeah. Right on. What yeah. what what percentage do you think you use? Let's say that you were going to write a a film script. So so we should talk about the fact that your background is in like right. You've written a lot of short stories. You wanted to write a novel. Yeah. Out of college. And so your background is is actual is, is in writing and not necessarily writing screenplays. Yeah, exactly. So you throw a lot of your stuff away that yeah. you write, and you learn that from f- from writing, like for the eye, like uh, like short stories, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then I want you to talk about that a little bit, and then I want you to talk about the difference between that and and writing for writing screenplays. Um, I guess I think they're the same. It's just the format's different. I think I think it's the same. That's idea. true. There's different. Like you have to, you, you yeah. know, just use paragraphs. Yeah, exactly. You got to center a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. You got to, <laughs> yeah, you got to hit. Yeah, you got to have like the speaker and stuff like that. Um, but no, there's got to be a different thought process, like I right? Think, I don't think so. Because you're thinking about visually, right? Or I yeah, mean, but I don't I think, know. I, 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 all I've done is help you write the the screenplays, which I, I, I take a writing credit for. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. But I think, uh, no, I think it's the same process for the most part. You just like, you end up like, we used to call it generating pro, or uh, a teacher of mine, Julie Schumacher, used to call it just generating prose. So that's what you're, 
that's what you're making. Like you're just okay. generating. Like in, when you're first, I mean, we did it with Canyon County. Remember, we did all this mm. exploratory writing with like yeah. different characters and stuff like that. You wrote yeah. like a few episodes, and then we just ended up not using any of them. Yeah, because like the stuff that I wrote. Yeah, we just ended up not using that. Yeah, but it was a part. It was an important part of the process, though. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and then we used a, we didn't use a bunch of stuff. Because you feel good, it helps you to write when you're like, <laughs> no, we can't use that, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me compare this to what I wrote, and then now I feel really good about myself. I know which direction to head. No, 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 but it's uh, not no, <laughs> just. <laughs> well, no, it's just like you you want to go down as many avenues as possible when you're on like a first draft thing. You know, you yeah. want to you want to go like, okay, well, what happens if this character goes this way or that way or this way, and then you eventually try to like mold it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like if you were to build like a wooden cabinet and you first have to like grow the tree then you like chop down the tree and then you like make like the wooden cabinet out of the out of the wood that was a crazy metaphor but you know what i'm saying like the <laughs> like your first like growing like yeah you need to like make sure that you have enough material in order to like shape it and mold it there we go so, that's good yeah like material that's a good analogy yeah so like the, Sweet. so i think that it's the same with prose and with and with screenplays, the difference is is that like the 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 sheen of prose happens in the writing process, where the sheen of a screenplay. Although we're, I guess our next project, we're going to try to make like the screenplay is like stand on, alone on its own as much as possible. But mm -hmm. usually, like we skip over like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like in, in a screenplay, you can just be like, she walked into the room and sat down. Yeah. But like you can't yeah. really like with prose, you have to like figure out okay, well let's describe the area, but then we're just like in a screenplay, we're like, well we'll figure it out. And we'll what's gonna be, the area is gonna look how it looks when we find a location that we can actually film <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously it's different for budgeted productions. We want to be as specific as possible. If there was like a production designer, we were, mm -hmm. we were working on sets and stuff, so that'd be different. But yeah, I think the the screenplays that we've written though is basically like okay, it's been taking place at her house or it's been taking place at this restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we just we can skip that whole part. That's true. And then and then also. So the, I think the, I think the, the the writing process for prose is similar in that like it's almost like the shooting of the script is like kind of the same thing where like once you like solidify in prose like okay this is my plot this needs to happen here these are the character beats this is the whole thing once you figure that out after that generation process, um, if at least at least for our work it's been like okay we've written the script and then we end there and then everything else is like the sheen everything else is the professional like you know where to put the camera all the angles and stuff like that when to yeah. cut that happens like in a group setting whereas in a novel you figure that out on your own like yeah. typing and stuff so yeah yeah that makes sense yeah because of the visual aspect and so so what 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 percentage of your, of your writing do you think you just you you don't use how much writing how much to grow the tree how big of a tree do you have to grow to, to make a little cabinet? I mean, it depends. I yeah. mean, I mean, it depends for like we speak. It was, I mean, I think it was, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was, I think it was like maybe it was like one to, it was one to one. So it was like basically for every page, we, I, I, for every page I wrote, I had to get rid of a page. Okay. And, yeah. and do you have a lot of material to draw on in the future from, from writing that from, from Brown Truck and We Speak and Canyon County. I mean, um, obviously, I know some of the stuff from Canyon County, but you still yeah, Canyon like... County was a good one because we actually had like good material. That was the first time that it was like when we when we made that when we were generating pros, it was actually like all like pretty decent scenes. You remember that? Like it yeah, was, like yeah. all like like we had like her with like the little girl, and then we had like a little girl arc and stuff. Yeah. So that's like obviously that one will work for We Speak. I don't think so. That was just like trying to figure out because a lot of it was just like trying to figure out like the tone of the conversation. Yeah. Because We Speak was just like the just two people talking in a room and what they should be talking about or whatever. yeah 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 so i mean there's some stuff that was maybe okay but it was it was mainly like i didn't i didn't nail the it took me a while to nail like exactly how they would speak to each other was it is it because of is it because of the 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 plot or or the, the plot points and the events that happen is that is that what makes it easier maybe if you imagine the the beats of the of what's going to happen to the character versus because like that we speak was a lot of of dialogue mm -hmm. is that harder to write ebbs and flows there and make it inherent in what's what's happening with the two people in their conversation or i don't i don't think so i think it was mainly i think it's mainly once you get uh, stanley kubrick made a great observation once where he's where they're asking him about dialogue and um i don't i don't know i guess stanley kubrick movies don't have like the best dialogue in them it, 
anyway. But like, yeah. but he said that. Uh, but they're always very functional and they're very good. Yeah. Like, it's like it's not embarrassing dialogue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's so it's like he, you know he's not like a great writer or whatever. I love embarrassing dialogue. That's yeah. my favorite thing ever. Yeah. I mean, I don't, obviously like I hope we don't ever have it in our <laughs> movies, but it's just yeah. it's it's so great. <laughs> yeah, but he said that uh, the he once he understands the situation, like the situation for him was king. So once the situation has been like figured out and like that's what yeah. the situation of the scene is and understanding the point of view of that situation for everybody involved the dialogue kind of more or less like falls into place and i think that that's that's pretty much true because you have a time yeah like okay. like because like, if you have a really strong situation and you understand each of the characters then you like like canyon county is a good example like if we understand where guillermo's coming from and where like ashland's coming from then like and the strong situation is he won't get up and go order or whatever. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this because it's going to go up before this. But anyway, like, you know what I'm saying? Though? Don't like, give away too many of our surprises. Yeah. But like, you know, if like, if you understand the situation of a dramatic scene, then yeah. like the dialogue more or less doesn't write itself, but it's like a little bit easier. Got it. Okay. So, so, so most of your brainstorming comes in that, in that aspect, imagining the character, being empathetic to the character, and then imagining the situation and how that character would, would react. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Sweet. So that's all anybody ever needs to know. Yeah, to exactly. Write? Yeah. <laughs> Take cool. it from me. Awesome. Writer, should we just put writer that, extraordinary. Should we just should we just like cut it to this this part right there so they get all the all they need right right away in the beginning rather than where we at twenty five minutes in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> just imagine you are a person that you aren't and you're in a, doing a thing that you wouldn't normally do and then everything like, else just falls right into place. Yeah. Isn't Super that the easy. Ex, was that the extras thing with the, with the Ian McKellen where he's like, where he's like, how do I act so well? And you're like, how? Well, I simply imagine what it would be to be a different person and I act in that way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude! Now you're dropping acting lessons. <laughs> I guess Ian McClellan did, but that's fine. Yeah, you never saw that one. Did you ever see that? One? I, th I think I did. It was on that yeah. show Extras. It was pretty funny. Oh, okay. I don't know if I watched that show. I think I saw it on YouTube or something like that. Yeah, no, it's really that, funny. Okay. Yeah. Is that an HBO show or what? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. all on HBO. You could watch it. Okay. You have HBO, I know. I do. Mm -hmm. I'll have to put it on my list. Yeah. Um, cool. So, so you you throw away about half your stuff. You're getting better at it. You say you're, that you're not, where do you need to be as a writer? That's my question. Like what, I think a lot of times people, when they, when they start to develop a skill, they don't, they don't see their own deficits until they get really like ingrained into what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the more you work on something, the more, and, and I think, uh, this is my personal opinion, but a lot of times people underestimate, um, underestimate the importance of the skill of writing. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to, to films, because yeah. films are so visual. You get a lot of people that are good at photography and cinematography, and maybe they can tell a story visually or they can, they can show an emotion visually. And then they start, like we were talking earlier about like the, the embarrassing dialogue. And I'm yeah. trying to think of some examples. Like there's some really awesome shows out there that I love to watch, like, like the flash yeah. on WB, <laughs> uh, just because like, it, it's like, they'll wa I'm walking into a room now or, you know what I mean? They'll just like, they'll throw on like three minutes of stuff, like this diatribe. And it's like, well, you're explaining what's going on already. Like you don't need to keep saying it, yeah. you know, <laughs> this is a bad guy. I'm going to get him. Yeah. Or no, know? wait, does, uh, does Barry look a little sad to you? Yeah. He's been sad ever since his girlfriend died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's also his sister. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like the over explanation. Well, I think I'm good at, I don't, I don't know. I think, uh, I think because your question was like where to go, I guess like how to yeah, get where, better. Yeah, what's, what's your next step? Like what, what was a skill that you feel like you've, you've kind of like started to polish and then what's your next thing that you need to well, work on? Well, I think on? that, I think I was enamored with ambiguity a little too much, especially in brown trucks. So I think, and then I think like We Speak was making a step because I think I was okay. so I was so concerned about like the flash dialogue of like trying to explain <laughs> that I ended up not explaining anything. Yeah. So like um I think that took like a and then we speak was a little bit better and then but it was a little maybe a little too soap opery or the situation was maybe like a little um a little too obvious but um um I think the next step is like is just getting I think writing like a good something that would get people like really suspenseful for a, an extended period of time. You know, keep them like, engaged. Keep them engaged. Well, no, no, actually, like a like I kind of want to write like a real like suspense thing, like a like a that would be pretty cool, like a real genre thing. 
Okay. That doesn't have the that 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 still has maybe like sort of the the artistic like the kind of art house rub your nose or look down on people like attitude but maybe like okay. lessens that like a little bit. You know what nice. I'm saying? Cuz I think So it's you wanted to be just above everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Just slightly. Yeah. Cuz I, I want to look down at you but not like too far down because well, I mean that's of, part of it. I mean like I think I want you to think that I'm attainable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that's part of it. I think that I think I think in a certain I think in a certain sense like you want to because I think that was part of it too. Because I remember when we first started making Brown Truck, we were just like we we wanted to make something that totally like just was was indecipherable almost. You know yeah, what I'm but, but it's, it's, I think we were drawing on a lot of science fiction. That's that's yeah. kind of that way that that we love. I yeah. mean, you know, because uh, we when I was in high school, Donnie Darko came out. Yeah, which is obviously has a lot of ambiguity to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of my favorite movies ever is Primer. Yeah, which which oh yeah, we watched that. Yeah, we watched that once together when we were writing that script. Yeah, yeah which is which is, I think is an amazing film. But at the end of it, like you have to watch it a few times to figure out what the hell happened. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't just like watch Primer and be like, oh, this is what happened, and yeah. explain like the the story arc to people. You're like, well, I know something cool happened. Yeah, but I can't figure it out. Yeah, and so I guess yeah, when we were doing Brown Truck, we 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 kind of like wrote a story and then like we took out the pieces. Yeah, that would have made, it, <laughs> that made sense. It's like, yeah, it's, but <laughs> I remember we very. I was very cavalier about that too. It's just yeah. like, well, they'll just have to watch it again. Yeah, <laughs> it's like well, what happens if they don't want to? <laughs> well, clearly, like in our first movie that we ever make ever, everybody's gonna want to watch it multiple times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect. That, that's 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 the way it is on your first film. Yeah, that of anyone that you ever hear about ever. Yeah, for sure. Because you know, <laughs> there's nobody else besides Kevin Smith yeah and then whoever did primer and then christopher nolan <laughs> christopher did, nolan oh yeah, following. yeah and then the el following. mariachi el mariachi oh el mariachi yeah that was a good movie yeah that was like that was legit like awesome it was like an action movie it yeah was cool i mean i think that that's i think that's the next step <laughs> there's like three people <laughs> for yeah. yeah and it's like every nobody else ever made a first movie ever except for those guys yeah. and then they immediately like are start at the top of the heap yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no brown truck's great no once, my, once yeah, it, yeah, once yeah. it goes on sh- sale once it goes on sale you guys should all buy it if you're listening to this yeah exactly no 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 it's a really no i really i really liked brown truck but i think that that's the because you were talking about the next steps and i think mm-hmm. that that were that's where our like I think I think the first step that we took was just like trying to make things that weren't so like um like opaque I guess and weren't so like you have to like really like sit down and pay attention to it and stuff like that and that was like yeah. how we speak we kind of took a step in that direction yeah. I think Canyon County is taking mm-hmm. another step where it's like kind of a more emotional story and stuff like that and I think the next probably the next step would be um probably tackling uh pessimism in general too What do you, what do you mean by that? I think we're I think we're a little pessimistic in oh, our, you in mean our like, endings and in our yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we kind of have a. I think I think Brian walk or, or yeah, our friend Brian one time said like, well, it's always like the snake eating its own tail. <laughs> <laughs> Where it just ends with yeah. just like, well, I guess that kind of ended how it began. Yeah, nobody really learned anything and nothing really happened. <laughs> like, yeah, but <laughs> it, I kind of like that because I think it's it's true to life. You know, I, I mean, if you too. take, it, yeah. I, I guess, I guess, I guess you're right in that where. It, I think some people come to to watch a movie. Some, I think most people go to see a movie to feel like, like these Marvel universe stuff that's in the theaters all the time, constantly. Like I just, what did I watch? Uh, no, it wasn't Marvel. It was it was DC. Excuse me. I watched a DC the 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 Justice League. Oh, was that and, good? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like all it is is like like trying to cover all their bases and all the different types of people that you might be able to like throw yourself <laughs> into, like immediately. You know, it's like this is a, this is a female. This guy is like like dark. You know, Batman or whatever. This guy's dark and mysterious. And then this guy's a a dude that comes from the ocean, but he's also very strong and and he helps people out and likes his community or or whatever. You know, it's like they're trying to like do all the the check marks for all the different people that might watch the movie yeah exactly. and then like, like all well, their job what about is the, like, what about the people that like go to all like you know every, anytime fitness all the time well maybe yeah. that'll be the aquaman <laughs> yeah because <laughs> they're like yeah. just like a fat... he doesn't get to have a shirt <laughs> <laughs> 
Is it just like a fat nerd in there too? Uh, um, not yet. I think just they like need a to... fat nerd with like a superpower, and then everybody, everybody would be like, "Wow, there's got to be one." There's yeah. got to be one of those movies. That movie might actually be kind of good, though. Yeah. No, what was that? There was that, there was a movie that was kind of like that. Where the did you see the one with the the superhero that was like basically like hallucinating? Did you ever see that one? No. Like he he just thought he was a superhero, but it turned out it was like a side effect of these drugs that like it would cause like delusions of grandeur and like hallucinations and stuff. No, it was I never it saw. was it was pretty funny. Okay. I mean it, it it was it was a good like it was a good joke. Oh, okay. But it w- went on for an hour and a half. Gotcha. When it could have been less time than that. An SNL skit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, but it, I mean it reiterated the joke quite a few times, so but anyway, the first time it came up, though, I was like, "Damn, this is hilarious." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <Cool>. so <laughs> now, now we went off on a on a diatribe a little bit. Um, so, so that so that to keen into some of those characters that that make you feel good is that what you're saying would be the next step? Yeah, or maybe like an art because I was trying to think of uh... rather than just being pessimistic and like nobody ever changes ever. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I think people do change. I think mm. that like our last two. Our last two major projects, I guess, showed like little like. Mm-hmm. like well, Brown yeah. Truck sh- showed showed improvement. Yeah, exactly. But it was it was kind of like a. Well, I don't want to give away too much, but yeah, anyway. because it's it's not out yet. It's not out. It will be out next year. Go watch Brown Truck, <laughs> when it, whenever or wherever it's available, and pay <laughs> lots of money for it. Yeah, exactly. Um, um. No, I mean, I think I think that there's like, I think that we could maybe make like a more positive maybe a more positive growth arc to some of our characters. And I think that's, that's what we're working on next with, with Zoe. So it'll be good. Yeah. But, um, so, but so I, I, I was thinking, go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, I was thinking of like, cause I think, I think the reason that, I think the reason that a lot of people do that. And I was like looking at like all of like the great literature or whatever, mm-hmm. like no, like great literature has like happy endings other than like Jane Austen. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about that. Like most, yeah. like most like great literature, either like there's a happy ending, mm-hmm. but it's like kind of like maybe like, kind of like a, a wash with like irony or something like maybe like somebody like works out but then you're like oh maybe that's bad for society i'm trying to think of like i think the charles dickens books ends like that but uh yeah. but i was thinking like all like you know like a- any hemingway book you know wife dies at the end or like he gets yeah. blown up uh um you know richard yates mm-hmm. you know I, like all of those books like end all of those great literature books like all end like really on a downer note and i think part of that is just like once you really get into like like ingesting media whatever it is like movies or like or books you end up ingesting like a bunch of like hallmark channel like sentimentality and then so you try to like avoid that you know what i'm saying yeah yeah like you want to just avoid like these like just happy endings just for the sake of happy ending just to try to make people feel good and then it become and then it becomes like ingenuine to you yeah and then so i was trying to think of like movies with like actual like genuine like happy endings yeah and then like and like books with genuine happy endings and i could only really find jane austen like pride and prejudice that has like a genuine you like read it and you're like wow that really worked out well i'm really happy Mm -hmm. for them and i think and then i was trying to think of other ones i guess like shawshank redemption kind of has a genuine happy ending yeah yeah and then uh, that's a good one yeah that was based on a stephen king novel so i know that that must have been or no a short story (laughs) no no no, it was a novella i think novella yeah okay how many pages is there like a... (laughs) a novella is I think a novella is like over under a hundred and I, over fifty. I think I think that's actually a novella, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I was just making up a number. Yeah, because a short story is like they usually cap it off at about like thirty pages. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then it's like, like a timed reading. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, if you can sit, yeah, a short story. If you can sit and read it in like one sitting without yeah. like a lot of. Yeah. I think I don't know. So that was just a yeah. great compliment that you gave to to Stephen King, throwing him in there. Yeah. With it, Hemingway. No, no, no. <laughs> Talking about the movie. Dickens. Talking about the movie. <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. I didn't read the novella. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that has like a genuine happy ending, that mm. movie. And then like uh, Moonrise Kingdom has a genuine happy ending, I think. Oh, yeah. The Wes yeah. Anderson movie. Yeah. But I think yeah. like what makes it genuine is that it gets really dark. And that you yeah. could, it could always go the other way. Mm. Or like the Before series, you know? Like they could just yeah. break up and it would make sense. I think that that's the difference between like something genuine and something that's just like stupidly sentimental. Where it's like it's always yeah. going to end nice. Then this is going to happen. And then they're going to get married. And then yeah, be, like you know what I'm saying. A lot of films they like throw those situations in like really quickly too. Yeah, it's especially like, like in like the Marvel DC stuff. They're like, oh my gosh, here's an obstacle. Yeah, and exactly. And then you're like, like, oh, no, yeah, I'm holding my breath. Yeah, I want to. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I if Iron if Man Hulk... is going to like yeah. do well on this. Yeah, exactly. And then I you... wonder if the Hulk is going to yeah. die. Like, <laughs> and the only surprise is if he like catches you off guard with a joke. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't anticipate that joke being there. But yeah, I think that's what it is. I think that like people that, I think that like, sorry, I think that like genuine things that are genuinely like uplifting always have that darker side where it could go the other way. Yeah. Like it could go, it could always go the other way. And then you're genuinely like surprised and moved that it actually ended up well. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah. not, the, you don't encounter that in real life. What? Where it's just like you automatically like overcome some obstacle. Yeah. It's like you have to work at it. Yeah, exactly. You know, just like yeah. you have to have the skill set to, to be, I mean, obviously some people just get lucky, but yeah. like most of us don't get lucky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then anytime that you, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, that does actually reflect like personal, personal life, like uh, the life of an individual. Like you're mm -hmm. not feeling like genuine happiness unless you actually like work towards, work towards genuine happiness. I Got think. Uh -oh. Cool. Are, well, are sweet. We going, are, we we just, into, are we going into weird territories there? I don't know. Well, maybe you're coming up with some good material, hopefully, that you can write down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just talk about it. There's a, there's a Bukowski quote where he like pretended to be a writer with some woman because she was rich. And you just sit around and pretend. <laughs> she would come home from work and then he would just be at the typewriter just like typing stuff. And she's like, you get a lot written today? Yeah, I did. Nonsense. <laughs> just don't All you... work and no play yeah. makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> yeah. so, like, That's I good. Can just, I, can just sit around I don't know, but I could type 200 words a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember his line. It was just like, yeah, I just sat around and just got drunk all day for a year. <laughs> nice. And eventually she kicked me out. <laughs> Very good. But look at that happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, he did all right with for himself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. So your next, your next writing project, what are you working on next? Well, I think we should talk about, I mean, I mean, so we're Obviously, gonna, I'll help. Yeah, I know. Obviously, you're going to help. So we're going to do- A little bit. We're gonna do. We're gonna do. Uh, well, we get. We're gonna be doing the the Canyon County stuff because we have to finish editing that, and hmm. then um, after that's done, we have uh, Zoe has a script. So what? That we're gonna be working on. Are you gonna try to make that like semi happy ending? Then is that? I don't oh, know. we can't. Well, we can't give away that. I don't know. I don't know. It depends. There will we... be struggle for sure. I don't know if it has and suspense <laughs> and thrill. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have a happy ending now. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but maybe it will. <laughs> we'll have to talk. Zoe's the main writer in that one, though, so you'll have to talk to her. About it, so. <laughs> Got it. You'll just you'll just trim the fat. Yeah, I'll just yeah. She just asked me to just like look it over a little bit. So oh, okay, that'll be the next thing. Sweet. Yeah, and that'll be our next big project. Good. Hopefully. Good. And what are you doing to keep your your skills up in the meantime um, for writing? Do you do you write every night, or what's or do you write? Do you give yourself goals? Um, not anymore. I probably should get back into it. Like I should probably for a while I would write five hundred words a day. Oh wow! And then no matter what, I would just write five hundred words a day. Okay. And then lately, it's been like every other day, I do oh, okay. like a thousand or something like that. And then like without like a real like direction for it, I've just been doing a bunch of like journaling and stuff like that, and then writing down. Okay. I have a big like ideas folder and then a few different notebooks. And then Sweet. so for a while, yeah. But that was actually that was a big thing. That was a big change because when I was twenty. When I was 25, that's when I started doing that. And that was like a big. Just just writing and practice your writing. Yeah, like 500 words a day. Or just and, set and, that and goal. It, yeah, and then if I didn't, if I didn't, I was like, oh, I don't want to write or I'm hungover. Or mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to, I would just be like, okay, it's only 500 words. I can do it. Yeah, that's awesome. And then sometimes but, I would stop in like the middle of a sentence and be like, okay, that's 500. And then I just like <laughs> walk away from it. <laughs> like, You're like, I'm going to throw this away anyway. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. You, you told me that story uh, quite a long time ago. And that's what, so, so when it came to, to music, um, that kind of inspired me to sit down and then just like throw things out without sit, without, without uh, questioning the quality of it. Yeah, exactly. You just you just you just get in the the habit. You just get in the habit of doing it, doing it, doing it. And I think with anything, it's like practice. And then you can just you can go back, and you don't notice it. You don't notice the improvement that you're making. Yeah, exactly. You just yeah. go back and you listen to something or or read something. You know, I mean, obviously in the writing aspect, I didn't write any letters down. Yeah. But but listening to the compositions earlier on, it's like, oh, okay. Wow, I really I, sucked. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And then it's like, oh man, if I come back, if I go back and look at this in a few years from now, is this going to be garbage? Yeah, it probably will be. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> probably be no, total garbage. Pla plateau. Yeah. Plateau's happened. Yeah, just totally hit it. <laughs> Sometimes you just you just ride the top of that <laughs> that plateau, and you look back, and then no self awareness anymore. Yeah. <laughs> sweet cool well i think that's i think that's pretty good 
I think that that uh, that covers us. All right. For for right. Hopefully, people got some some advice or some some pointers and and to help them out with their writing process here. Or um, or they just said, who the hell does he think he is? <laughs> That could happen too. <laughs> Probably. I thought about that a few times as I was asking <laughs> you questions. <Yeah. laughs> so it's perfectly probable that that may be a question in the audience's minds. Yeah, exactly. No, but uh, thanks for coming in today. And uh, we'll chat again soon. All right, sweet. Thank you. <laughs>